morning on 48 Hours TV, we are joined by not only an Oscar-nominated actress, a Golden Globe actress, and someone who starred in numerous movies. She was born in South Africa. She now lives in the UK. Take a listen to the list of movies. Macbeth, The Three Sisters, A Day in uh, Death of Joe Egg, and many, 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 many more. The list goes on. And she's with us on our couch, and she's in South Africa for an incredible production. Dame Janet, thank you so much for joining us on 48 yes. Hours That's TV. My Tell us everything, your career highlights. It's just been an amazing, incredible journey. Uh, a young girl born in Johannesburg yes. to the big stage on uh, in the UK. Well, I I was curious about this acting thing when I was a bit. Uh, I joined the university place because it seemed to have the best parties <laughs> on the campus. Um, and I really wasn't, I had no idea what acting was. And then I pulled myself up for a moment and thought, I think there's more to it. And then, as now, the only way to find out was to go to drama school. Mm -hmm. And the best drama schools, as now, are in the UK. Because the UK, as you know, has this long 500-year-old tradition of drama and acting. So I got myself on a, uh, a history of art flight. It was the cheapest way to get over there. <laughs> you know. So I went to some Greek ruins and then I landed up mm -hmm. in London. I auditioned for drama schools and to my astonishment got in. And my parents were very kind. They said, well, the proof of the pudding, if you get in, we'll help you. So they, they had to, because I didn't get in. And so I found myself really plunged into that very English world of, British world, if you like, of classical theatre. And I found that absolutely wonderful. It's a very different world than today's, where I have a feeling that people want to be actors so they can be celebrities. Yes. But I promise you it wasn't like that then. We wanted to be actors because we wanted to be actors. Mm. The art of it. The art of it, the craft of it, yes. And the language of it. We, if you have the luck, and it's the toss of a coin, to be born speaking English, you do have that extraordinary fun fountainhead of, obviously, William Shakespeare, um, who's, who's like, I don't know, the Nile, the Ganges. Mm. Mississippi, it just goes on and on and rolling along uh, with very great plays. So I got sucked and drawn into this milestone of classical theatre and the Royal Shakespeare Company found me. And um, it was the beginning of the Royal Shakespeare Company. I think everybody's heard of it now. Yes. All these years on. <laughs> but then a great man called Peter Hall, so Peter Hall now, um, was reshaping the way the British thought about language and about Shakespeare. I think before our time, it had been seen as a sort of Beethoven, a musical thing. Mm. He was much more interested in the meaning yes. of the language, which is, as we all know, old, but always fresh, mm. because that's what a classic is. So, we plunged into this almost Cambridge University reassessment of how Shakespeare should be treated for an audience yes. and it was a miracle really it all worked so stunningly he did all the history plays which are very warlike thuddy ironclad <laughs> you know <laughs> action packed yes. kind, of, kind of plays and um, it was all a mighty success and we, I rolled on from there so then I, I got to make things like uh, well a highlight I suppose was Cleopatra really which is Maybe, arguably, somebody out there might contradict me, but then have a hard time. Um, probably the best part ever written for, a, for an actress. And um, I still, I've just written a book about that actually, which is called, unexpectedly, not Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's, I'm going back and forth now, but that's where I began. Actually. So the book, when is that coming out? It's out. So we can expect it on South African shelves, you know, we're a bit delayed. No, I don't know, you're a bit behind here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's fine, we're being honest. Yes. Okay. Um, Amazon, it's an e-book. Yes. But whenever I say to somebody, we'll go on Amazon, they say, uh, um, well, there's something called Kalahari. Yeah. Uh, and oh, that's a South African thing, oh, yeah. I don't know what it is, I don't yes. it's your problem. Yeah, no, I, we'll figure it out and we'll treat those details. Yes. Okay, but it's a really nice book for those who are interested in my sort of subject, I suppose. So 
So you've written a book, you're, you're an actor, and you also have director behind your name. Yes, I did. I came back to this mother country of mine, which I've always loved. I've always wanted to keep my toe in the water mm. because uh, it's an amazing country. And at the end of the 80s, my friend John Carney, I felt needed something fantastic and a fellow popped into my head. And so we did a fellow together. That was three years before my Liga walked into the sunlight. And um, it proved to be a sort of a, a groundbreaking thing because the black audience started coming in. It must have been word of mouth. And it wasn't an agitprop play, and it wasn't a protest play, which the market was then doing, of course. That was the time. You're too young to remember. There you go. That's, they were hard times. Um, and Othello, which is the story of a black man humiliated by a white thug. That's the story, basically. Just took off in Johannesburg, and John Carney was one. And so that was my first directorial thing and I found myself fascinated by it because in the actor you know you have to look at the world through your own eyes just like we do in life yes. it's your opinion yes. it's what you see a director is from the godlike um, I can see everybody's point of view <laughs> and I found that fascinating now what brings you back to South Africa I mean it's been many years yes it has and it's my friend Lara Foote wonderful girl who runs the Baxter Theatre. Big fan. Yes. We're a big fan. Good. We're often there. Um, the team from 48 Hours are often there. Good. She's terrific. Yes. And um, she wrote a play. She's an extraordinarily talented writer, is Lara. And I was here last February, um, sitting in my mum's old house on the veranda and a brown envelope arrived through the post box. And I, she uh, just said, read this. So I sat there in the sun <laughs> and I, I read, it was a page turner. I just went and I finished it in an hour. Fantastic. And I just went to the phone and I picked it up to her and I said, so when are we doing it? And it was this play, Lara, um, uh, Solomon and Marion. And it was irresistibly good. It was just a first cast piece of text. And so that's, that's what I'm doing now. And it opens in Johannesburg. Uh, it's open in Johannesburg. We played Johannesburg. Johannesburg. We just came back, uh, where it was quite wonderfully received. It's a it's a bit of a Kleenex play. It's you need you need you need a lot of blood time, but it's also very funny. It, it cuts a knife edge balance between comedy and, and tragedy, and uh, the audience just responds so wonderfully to it. So now we're playing it here. And then we take to Edinburgh. That's fantastic. When does the run end in, in Cape Town? Ten days time. So you need to go see it and then into Edinburgh. And then we go to Edinburgh. And you're taking some of the South African cast with or, you? No, we're two. What do you mean some of? Yes. Just the two. We're taking 50%, which is my partner. Yeah. So you're directing and you're in it. No, I'm not directing it. You're just in it. And Lara? It's Lara's baby. Is she coming with you? She'll come for a day or two yeah. and see us in. Yeah. But my young actor who's with me is stunning. I have to tell you, his name is Kayale to Anthony. He's a youngster. It's his first ever big part. And he's absolutely fabulous, I have to tell you. How did you come about meeting him? And how did he get to No, no it was Lara who auditioned hundreds of young men, I think, for this part mm -hmm. of Solomon. And he got it. And he's just enchanted. And I love acting with him. I like acting with him better than anybody I've ever acted with. <laughs> that includes Michael Caine and I don't know who, Ian McGowan. Yeah. That's a big compliment. Oh, no, he's good. Tell me some of the things that happen behind the scenes and the fun and the fun behind. I'm they very discreet. Oh, <laughs> come on. There must be some funny moments. There have been funny <laughs> moments. There have. Of course there have. I can't possibly pick them out because <laughs> they're too rude. <laughs> but everyone thinks it's so glamorous. You get your script and you go on stage and you act it out. That's not what it's about. There's, there's long hours, hard work, you've flown in early to meet up with your, your, your co-partner in this. How long before the time did you start rehearsing together? You usually rehearse for a month, that's standard. I think for a really big play and proper subsidy, 
Oh, this is South Africa. No, Don't sorry. Get in there. No, 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 we have to do this for the arts. The arts have to yes. be subsidised. They have never in the history of the universe ever paid for themselves because that's not how they're made. Mm. Um, so if you don't have a Prince Medici, you have to have a government. Uh, but that would be a six week rehearsal probably for a big, big, big play, like, you know, uh, Macbeth or something like that. Um, but normally it's three to four weeks because what the actors do during that time, the public is never allowed in for obvious reasons yeah. because it's a private exploration of what's going on in the play. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and lots of actors like rehearsals best. They want them to go on and on and on. Really playing on the stage is kind of okay. Right? We've, <laughs> we've solved it now, we know what we're doing. But um, the rehearsal period is a wonderfully exciting time for actors. Um, but it's not, it's not anything to do with learning your lines, really. It's to do with ex exploring what this other human being that you're inventing um, how they behave from second to second. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, if you've been playing people who've actually walked this earth, you owe them something. You owe them some honor, in a way. I've played various people who have lived, like um, the Empress Alexandra of Russia. I did a huge, big Hollywood movie called Nicholas and Alexandra. And, um, she walked the earth, and I didn't like her very much to begin with. And I had to find a way in to love her, because you can't do justice to somebody yes. if you don't like them. You have to find something that appeals to you. And of course I did, she had this poor little son who had haemophilia, and she was desperate about this little boy. And so you can understand yes. that, any woman can understand yes. that. You know, it's, it's a natural thing to concentrate solely on that ill child. Um, St. Joan of Arc. Yes. I mean, there's somebody that it's quite hard in a rather secular age to enter into that mindset. You know, some people talk to God <laughs> uh, and so on, but you have to find your way, yeah. and that's what rehearsals are for. Now, you speak about these, these women and these roles that you play in honour of these women. You've also been honoured with something really great in 2011. Can you share with us that moment? Oh. Well, I was in my kitchen and a brown envelope. I'm always having brown envelopes. <laughs> they good luck. They're signs of oh, they just oh, good luck. Plop through the door. <laughs> they always go. And it said 10 Downing Street on it, on the back of it. And I thought, I'm going to be put in the tower. <laughs> I'm going to have my head chopped off. I'm going to have to pay some tax. Something like that. Anyway, I opened it and it said, um, the Queen has graciously decided to confer upon you the. Uh, uh, this, this honour of becoming a Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire. Now there's something insane about that because the British Empire is well over. We all know that. And yet these orders continue yes. in the British monarchy. And there's something also touching about that as well. And I was so gobsmacked, I had to sit down and have a very strong coffee or two. <laughs> and then I thought, this is immensely exciting. And it's also crazy, why me? But you don't know, they don't tell you why, they just say, for services to the theatre. Fantastic. And it was fantastic, and I decided I wasn't illustrious enough to refuse that. No, of course not. No, so I accepted it with great pleasure. Well, it's been a real honour having you with us and joining us on 48 Hours TV. We look forward to seeing the production at the Baxter. It's running for the next couple of days, so get your tickets. Couple of days till next Sunday. Till next Sunday. There we Sunday go, week. 10 days. So don't miss out. You really want to get those tickets. And it's very short. And it's 75, 75 minutes long. Bingo, you're out and have dinner. So you can go to the theatre and you can go for dinner afterwards. You see, that's the problem in South Africa. People don't want to sit for long hours. Well, you know, people are crazy. Because if you, how long is a piece of string? If you're having a good time, you're having exactly. a good time. Exactly. Doesn't matter. So we don't even need to tell you that it's 75 minutes, but you're going to have loads of fun. Thanks again for joining us on the couch. Thank it was you. great chatting to you. Thank you so much. You're with 48 Hours TV. Stay right where you are.